listen to that. You know how quiet that machine is? So this is Caleb's first experience machining a rotor on a bench lathe. And uh, I showed him what uh, dull bits do to the micro finish on your machine surface. And then I had him flip that blade over there and he found a good surface. We had him flip this cutting tip uh, and found a good cutting surface. And then uh, he was doing two and three thousandths passes, which were called heavy cuts. Uh, we didn't do them fast, we did them same speed. And then his final cut was uh, half a thousandths or less. And it was almost a fine powder, if you can see it on there. And the machine was whisper quiet. So next what we're gonna do here is we're gonna stop the machine and we're gonna take a look at that finish. And if we probably put a brand new bit on there, it would probably be better than that. So that micro finish is actually really, really smooth. Same thing on and, this side. And it came out. This side's even better. Yeah. I think it that definitely could use a fresh set of, of bits because I, I don't know how worn out they are, but it did a good job. So next what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate a non-directional finish. So what happens is the brake pads will actually follow this um, and move around until they break in. So Kale's just gonna take this and there's many ways of doing this, but you're not gonna duplicate it like the manufacturer. I'm gonna show you what I did. So then you can just apply pressure and move the Scotch brake pad around. And then I'm just gonna show you this for demonstration purposes. So what you're doing right now is you're mimicking a non-directional finish. And if he presses harder, you'll actually see that. And what it's doing is changing the cutting pattern in the, uh, the rotor. And that helps with break-in process too, and increase the stopping power uh, as they break in. It's harder. Now you don't want a non-directional finish to be too choppy uh, because it will definitely make noise and also um, it'll reduce the stopping power of the brake pads and rotors as they're seating and breaking in. Because the rotor surface needs to cure, the brake pads need to cure. Um, so there is a process in that. And that's just a few uh, higher speed stops, some low speed stops and some mid stops are usually good for the mechanic to bearish everything in. And then the customer definitely needs to drive easy 500 to 1,000 miles after this because this rotor will really get hot and overheat fast same with the friction material in its curing process. Let's take a look at it. See that? Yep. It's getting better. And you don't have to go crazy. Thanks for watching. So yeah, I mean, good job.